Hello, my name is Heather, and I am going to answer these questions for our assignment on um, watching a speech. Um, and the speech that I watched was the one by President Ronald Reagan. Um, he gave a tribute to the Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy, um, which happened on January 28th, 1986. And the Space Shuttle Challenger had taken off, and then after only about 73 seconds after takeoff, um, it exploded. And I remember that day. Actually, I was seven years old, and I was sitting in school, and we were watching it as a class. And we were excited because we were like, oh, this is so neat. The space shuttle's taking off and it's going to go into space. And how cool is that? Um, and then I remember watching it live explode and feeling confused and sad and kind of thinking, this isn't real. This isn't really happening. And I remember my classmates also thinking that. Um, again, I was only seven years old, so it was a bit of a shock, um, not just for me, but the whole nation. Um, what was the main part or point of the speech? I believe that President Ronald Reagan wanted to express sympathy, support, empathy, and especially he wanted to give a tribute to those that had lost their lives in this tragedy. Um, I believe that he also wanted to express love to the family um, that, that lost their loved ones. He, I'm gonna actually quote um, something he said verbatim. He said, quote, Nancy and I are pained by this loss. Um, I like that he includes, by the way, unquote, <laughs> But I like how he includes his family, um, like his wife. It makes it more personal. I believe that he was trying to show sincerity, um, concern. He wanted to show that he cared. And I thought that was awesome. Because I really believe that he did care. Um, which is pretty amazing. But... Um, he goes on to say, we feel the loss and are thinking about you so very much. And just the way he words this, um, I just think that it's awesome. I think about you so very much. It's like he wants to emphasize that they really do care. And then he says, your loved ones were daring and brave. They had that special grace, that special spirit that said, give me a challenge and I'll meet it with joy. And I just thought... That's pretty cool how he worded that. And then he also said, they had a hunger to explore the universe and to discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us, end quote. And I just thought that was awesome. I thought, wow, what an amazing um, president um, to show that kind of tribute, um, especially for such a shocking thing to happen, um, a loss like that. Uh, what nonverbal cues did the speaker use to convey his or her message? I believe that he was very emotional, vulnerable. He appeared nervous to me um, as he was kind of like moving with his hands, touching his hands a lot, um, very fidgety kind of that way. But I could tell he was nervous. Um, he wanted to show support, love, and I really appreciated the sincerity in his voice because you could actually hear it. You could see it in his eyes. Uh, he wanted everyone to know um, that he was just like the rest of us. He wasn't, just because he was the President of the United States didn't mean that he wasn't a human being. He was, he was being real. And it saddened him, and you could see it on his face. And I just, I really appreciated that personally because as someone who is over 
our uh, country, you want that kind of support. And so I thought it was really neat. Um, the final question is, um, well, I believe it's the final question. Let me make sure here. Sorry. Oh, no. There's a couple more questions after this. Sorry. Went on to the next page. Um, what listening challenges did you experience while listening to the speech? Well, to be honest with you, I had to replay it. Um, several times because the recording wasn't the greatest and so at first I couldn't understand everything that he was saying and so I had to replay it a few times and then um, listen to it over and over a bit um, just so I could get everything so that was really the only challenge I had while listening to it um, but what kinds of activities distracted you and or affected the your ability to listen <laughs> I'll give you three reasons. <laughs> My children, <laughs> I love them very much, but <laughs> they could hear that I was listening to something, and so they kept coming out, Mommy, what are you doing? Mommy, what's that? And so then I'd have to pause it and start it over. Sorry, there's like a shadow. Sorry. Um, and so I felt like I had to kind of stop, start, stop, start, because I had some cute distractions let's just put it that way um yeah my three children were in bed towards the end here but they kept sneaking out and trying to figure out what i was doing um are there any tasks you feel you can do without affecting your listening um f honestly for me um i consider myself a fairly good multitasker but if you want, if I'm trying to watch something or listen to something, I I need to um, really give it my full intention attention in order to fully grasp what I'm watching or listening to, um, so that I can give it my best all. So, um, I've kind of learned over the years that. You really have to give people your full attention. Um, it's just it's just kind. So if I'm listening or to somebody talk, or I'm watching a lecture or something like that, I believe that I need to give it my full attention in order to be polite. Um, my mom and dad always taught me that. So anyway, that's my final question. Thank you for watching, and we will hope you're having a great day. Thank you. Bye bye.